Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we took out the notorious War Machine, who gave us a pretty good run for our money, as well as the fourth and final fiend, Tiamat. Now that we brought light back to the four orbs, all that's left to do is to take out the true root of evil. And whether it's a person or a thing, we just don't know. A uh, quick point. I leveled up to 30 in between episodes, which is, well, most of them are up to 30, hope still 29. Uh, a minimum level 25 is probably a good idea, it'll make it so that this last dungeon isn't too big of a deal. Uh, any higher than that should be a cakewalk. So starting from the Temple of Fiends, make our way to where we killed Garland before, and you'll notice that there are 5 bats in this room. And if you'll remember, someone in the Fiend mentioned that, uh, the last five Sky Warriors were turned into bats, so maybe this is them. If we talk to them, it turns out, yes, it is them! Wow, it says it right there, our Sky Warriors. And uh, hopefully we don't turn into bats, because that would not be fun. Though it would be pretty ironic, since I, I do hate them so much. Yeah. Anyways, apparently we have to travel back 2,000 years in the past, so not only are there floating castles in this game, there's also time travel, which is pretty cool. This game is definitely ahead of its time. Ho ho, see what I did there? Let's see what these other bats have to say. Uh, apparently if we put our four orbs on the black orb, the time gate can open. Okay, that's that's good to know. And the fiend's curse turned them into bats. And yep, the evils in the past. Okay, so let's go there. If these bats will get out of my way, thank you. If you step on here, you now reach the final dungeon of the game. Now keep in mind, there's no way of going back unless you have the exit spell. So, just make sure you keep a spell charge in case you do need to go back, if you need to get some potions, or you need to level a bit more, maybe it's too tough for you, but just keep that in mind. This place is pretty huge, there's 10 floors to the area, starting from here you want to go to the lower right staircase, and in terms of enemies, all the enemies that we've encountered before are down here, especially all the really strong ones. The only difference is you're going to be coming across them in larger groups, and so don't be unexpectedly finding packs of nine enemies and yeah make sure make sure you're, you heal up don't be too conservative on your spell charges uh, if you have heal potions use those because you will be taking lots of damage in here because it is really long there's 10 floors to this place which is pretty crazy and strangely enough i can remember this place really really well i think it was the first area of the game that i actually played by myself after my friend finally let me borrow the game so hopefully I won't get too lost. So we want to come up over here, and if we take one step forward, we have a fixed encounter with a phantom, which is pretty similar to the eye that we saw in the ice cavern. Uh, it tries to kill you instantly with a couple of different spells. Uh, really don't bother using any stat bonusing spells or whatnot. Uh, just use your physical attacks and take it out. Uh, it doesn't have that much hit points, and I, you can see it's already dead. And for defeating it, we get a grand total of one experience point. Oh, yes. That was just going to push me over the cusp to the next level. Uh, in these chests, we have gold and more gold. If you want to pick them up, go ahead. If you don't, I don't blame you. Really, gold is useless at this point. And as you can see, we have a stone plate, very similar to the one we had in the Earth Cave. So let's, uh, let's try using our rod. And it doesn't do anything. Remember at the very beginning of the game, I mentioned to pick up the loot because it'll play an important role later on. Well, apparently this is where you need to use it. If you go into your inventory, bust out the loot, it reveals a stairway. Now, the first time I played this game, I didn't know that. I didn't pick up the loot. So when I got here, I was uh, pretty confused. And yeah, it's kind of weird how the beginning of the game, you get a key item and you use it at the end. But it's kind of cool that way too. Anyways, moving onwards. From here, we want to go to the upper left. Yes, okay. Uh, and these rooms that I'm passing up, they're all empty pretty much. So I probably wouldn't even bother looking in them. Uh, if you don't believe me, feel free to go ahead and look. But really, you're just wasting time and taking additional damage. That could be avoidable. Uh, also, if you have the heal helmet still and the heal staff, uh, it's a really good idea to use them pretty often in between battles, or rather, during battles. If you can whittle an enemy down to just one enemy or two enemies, then spam the heck out of them. Uh, it's a pretty good idea to save your spell charges that way, or even uh, to save your heal potions. 
Continuing onwards, we want to head to the left. If you go south, I think there's a wall, so pretty much this is the only path to take. And I've been getting pretty lucky with the enemies I'm coming across, so I'm not going to complain too much. I'll probably knock on wood. Except I don't see any wood near me. Oh well. So let's just take the staircase. And starting from this point onwards, we're on kind of themed floors uh, based off of the four fiends that we came across before. So this is the Earth Fiends floor, so you're going to be coming across a lot of enemies from the Earth Cave. Uh, what you want to do is just kind of make your way towards the lower right hand staircase, and it should be pretty straightforward. Unless, of course, you come across four Earth Elementals, and they still do quite a bit of damage. I think Paper took like 150 in one hit. Uh, don't go down there, it just leads to a dead end. What you want to do is just keep going around clockwise until you finally get down to this bottom right corner. And random enemy... Oh no, okay. That wasn't very nice, game. Why did you do that to me? Anyways, if you come here, take one step downwards, you come across a boss with the Lich. Didn't we already kill the Lich? Well, you have to remember we've gone 2,000 years in the past, so the Lich is still alive. Uh, pretty much exactly the same as the Lich before, except it has 100 more hit points. It has a couple of new spells, specifically Nuke, you want to watch out for that one. And also, it doesn't have that many uh, weaknesses now. So I'm going to go ahead and use... I'll just attack my normal attack. And use my staff, yeah. I wouldn't bother about using fast or anything like that. We're doing some decent enough damage that we should be able to take it out pretty quickly. Uh, except so far I'm doing like 40 and 48. And 470, so look at that. Paper for the win. Pretty much a one hit kill. Well, I guess 500 hit points is what it would have. But yeah, that's the kind of theme that we're going to see with the rest of these floors here. Uh, this is the fire floor, so at the end of it we're going to come across carry, and it'll be stronger than before. This room is a little bit more interesting. We have to go in a clockwise fashion, and there's actually some treasure to pick up along the way, so let's make sure we pick it up. I think we want to go this way, go into this room here. Yep, okay. Uh, symmetrical room, go in one way, come out the other. And this place is really, really easy if you held on to the black shirt, because you can just spam the heck out of Ice 2 and take things out really, really quickly. I think we want to go this way, yep. Now, before going to the staircase up there, we're going to take a slight detour and come down this way, because this is where the treasure actually is. So first up, we have a piece of armor, which I don't have any room for. So let's toss something. Uh, decisions, decisions. The black shirt's still pretty useful here, so I'm going to get rid of the heel helmet. Uh, I know a lot of people will probably hate me for that, but... Oh, we got a pro ring, okay. That's not very good. But don't worry, there's something actually worthwhile down here that's going to replace uh, that empty inventory spot, so it's a good thing that we chose to toss something at this point. Uh, if we come down here, there's more treasure with our name on it, and I think it's pretty good if I can remember. Uh, let's go down here, and I think it connects. Yeah, okay, so you can go either way. And hopefully there actually is something in there. Yes, there is. Okay, and we get ourselves a katana. So if you didn't pick up the one before, this is an opportunity to pick up another one. Uh, you want to give that to your ninja if you have it at this point. Or if you have two ninjas, each of them can have one. I'm going to cut back up a little bit, that way I can save time on walking back. Because there's still quite a bit to go. Okay, now that we're back here, let's take the right path and get this treasure. And we have a Protect Cape, which is a shield type item for your mages, which I've mentioned before. Uh, you can give it to your Wed Wizard, or if you have a Black Wizard, that's also a really good idea. And uh, why is my shield not equipped? I just noticed that now, so that might be why I'm taking so much damage. Okay, let's give the Protect Cape to Lexa, and bam, voila. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I'm going to hold on to the black shirt just because it's still pretty useful. I don't think there's any more armor that we can pick up along the way, so pretty much what you have now is what you're going to have at the end of the game. And there should be one more treasure in here, yep. And we get ourselves some gold, so nothing really spectacular. So I'm going to meet you back at the staircase to the next level. Alright, make sure you healed up, because if you take one step north, or two steps north rather, you come across carry yet again. Uh, same thing as before, hit points increased by 100. 
Uh, resistances, pretty much there are none, so I'm going to go ahead and use White Shirt to get Invisibility 2 up, just because Carrie can hit quite a few times, six times actually, because of the six arms. Uh, nothing really to worry about too much. If you want to use Fast in one of your characters, go ahead. Just make sure you keep a couple for the, the last couple of boss fights. And yeah, we're doing pretty good damage. I really don't think it's necessary. Especially Paper with that Excalibur. Wow, that was crazy damage. And now we are on the water floor. Now this place is pretty easy if you have the Zeus Gauntlet. Uh, other than that, just kind of go to the lower right. And I think it's a pretty short room. Pretty. F uh, that's actually nothing in there. This room here is... Yeah, that's nothing. It looks like it's some sort of pathway, but it's not. Uh, head this way. So we continue on this way. And uh, I think it's a short room. Can't remember now. This is probably the least memorable of the areas for me. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So we want to exit here. Oh my goodness, the encounter rate here is just crazy. And I keep coming across large packs of uh, water elementals, which are weak to ice attacks. Keep that in mind. But come down here and make sure you heal up at this point because if you take one more step, you come across the Kraken. Now, whereas the other two fiends before were pretty easy, this one you want to keep your eyes on it just because it has eight arms. It can kill you pretty much one hit with a physical attack. So definitely use the white shirt, get that evade up so that you can have a better chance of surviving and then just kind of do as much damage as quickly as possible. Uh, if you want to use a fast on one of your characters, probably a good idea. I'm going to see how much damage this does. 300, so I know I'm doing pretty good. So I'm not going to use the fast just yet. And 376, oh my goodness. That was a lot more than I was expecting. You need to cure three on paper. And I'll use another white shirt, just in case. But he should be pretty close. Oh, oh I thought that was going to hit Paper for a second. That would not have been good. Because not only is Paper a really good tank now, since you've got the Excalibur, he's going to be doing some massive damage. The only person that's going to come close is the Master. I mean, if you have a Ninja, they do okay damage, but really, Excalibur and a Master is fantastic. So I'm going to heal up really quick, and then we'll continue onwards. All right. Man, this game likes to troll me. We are now on the Thunder level, which is the one right before the last one. Uh, if you go straight to the right, you'll come across Tiamat and the staircase to the next place. But if you go down this way and make your way to the lower right hand portion of the map, you'll actually get something that's... Well, I'll, I'll show you when we get to it. It's definitely worth picking up. And it should just be down... Here we go down this little path here, which is almost like a staircase, but keep in mind this is a bird's eye view, so it's not. It's actually a really poorly designed hallway, if you think about it. And here we go. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The very last treasure in Final Fantasy 1, and it's a good one. And here we have the Mazmune, which is the best weapon in the game, and interestingly enough, anyone can use it. Even a white wizard, even a black wizard. Uh, probably not the best use of it. If you have another fighter, or knight rather, you can give it to him. If you have a ninja, give it to him. Uh, don't give it to your master, that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna give it to Lexa, just because it makes the most sense. Uh, if you want to use it on your white wizard, feel free to go ahead. I'll actually give something to do other than uh, spam heal or lightning 2, fire 2. But I think this makes more sense. And I want to make sure it's on Lexa for the final fight. Uh, if I put it on hope, I might forget, and that would not be good. Uh, so I'm going to cut to the beginning of this floor so we can go take on Tiamat. Alright, the staircase we came down is just to the top left there, so let's go on to the right and face Tiamat. And just like before, same sort of strategy. If you want to use fast, feel free to do so. I'm going to use the white shirt to get invisibility 2 up. I'm not really too worried about Tiamat. Wow, 72 damage. Maybe I am. Whoa! Maybe I should start taking this fight a little bit more seriously. Uh, Tiamat should have about 1100 hit points, so make sure you're in for a long fight. Didn't think it would be this difficult, but this game never ceases to amaze me. 
Um, what do I do? It's gonna keep on attacking. I should probably heal Paper. I'll use a Cure 4. Get him up to full. Ooh! And there is Thunder, which does decent damage to everyone. I thought we lost Paper there for a second, which would not have been good. Especially since I would have wasted the Cure 4, but... There we go. Okay, good. Now we're in pretty good shape. Probably should have healed up fully before this fight, but... Uh, starting to run out of spell charges, which isn't that big of an issue because we're almost at the end, but... Yeah, make sure you heal up. <laughs> That's the point of this story. And we've done, what, 700 damage now? So maybe this round will be enough to take him out. And as you can see, with the Mazmine, Alexa is actually doing some pretty good damage. And, uh, ooh, Poison Spell, which doesn't actually poison us, it just does damage. Which is good, because I don't think I have any pure potions at this point. And there we go, teammate's dead. And we get a whopping 500 experience points. So that's the last of the four fiends, so if we just continue over here... This is the last floor of Final Fantasy. And that was the last random encounter of Final Fantasy, because there's no random encounters on this floor, thank god. Uh, as you can see, this is the last room that we need to go into, where the boss is waiting for us. Uh, make sure you're at full hit points, make sure you're ready to do this, because there's no going back now. But I'm going to save the bonds for the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. Until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.